Please, MatPat, do a theory on Shorts Wars. MatPat needs to take a look at the YouTube Shorts ARG. There right. is now a ARG in This might be part of a well-known Shorts Wars. Wars. YouTube Shorts like Daniel Jones. Okay, okay, I get it. We're doing the Shorts War. Wait, they just ended? Damn it! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film, Film, Film Theory, Theory. The show that just wants you to sub, 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 subscribe. Hmm, strange. The overwhelming glitchiness seems to indicate that we're covering an ARG today. And not just any ARG, this one is found right here on the shores of YouTube.com. Specifically, we're talking about The Shorts Wars, an ARG starring a variety of different short centric channels, including Bun Dun, Dan O'Cal Drawings, Joe Kane, Royal Pear, Failure, and the biggest of them all, at least according to subscribership, Johnny Razor. Now, if you're not familiar with the last one, it's likely that you're familiar with the fallout of his work. Remember a few months ago when everyone suddenly became very invested in the Waffle House finding itself a new host? Well, that was the brainchild of Mr. Bad Ideas Johnny Razor himself. And now he and that crew of other creators are at it again. Or, not really them, rather it's an army of clones replacing them. Regardless, they are up to some new tricks and it's up to us to figure out what's going on. Obviously, like, after the fact, like, if MadPat makes the video, you'll be able to watch that and you you get the gist but like being there every day where it's like the new videos going up getting all of that in real time is so cool and like really helps like the theorizing a lot uh like i was saying it's up to us to come around a bit later in the process to recap what happened put the pieces together and then solve what's going on thanks guys for recognizing that daily lore drops are really hard for us to cover in real time now if all of this is new to you then i recommend you go to check out their channels links for all of them are down there in the description below because what this group has created over the past month is one of the most fun uses of youtube that i've seen happen in a long long time this thing spans over a hundred shorts live streams Streams, multiple hidden unlisted videos. Oh, and let's not forget the website that's no longer available. So go hunt around, see what you're able to put together, and make sure you subscribe to them since you're probably going to want to be there when they inevitably do a season two of this thing. So let's do what they openly acknowledge that we do best and give you the gist of what happened, what you may have missed along the way, and then predict what season two has got in store. Grab your QR codes and fishing poles, loyal theorists, because today we're untangling the mystery of the Shorts War ARG. Let's just start back at the beginning, how this whole thing kicked off. The ball got rolling when Johnny Razor posted a short to his channel that, at first, didn't seem all that out of the ordinary. You got Johnny telling a story in front of a green screen with some Minecraft parkour playing around in the background. Classic short stuff. But then, the video glitches out, with a QR code briefly flashing on screen before returning to normal. Scanning the QR code redirects you to an unlisted video called message.mp4, featuring a masked man with a voice filter. This ominous bad guy goes by a lot of different names across the fan community, but we're gonna be calling him The Boss for this video. And right off the bat, the boss makes his opinions about YouTube shorts, and specifically their creators, quite clear. For far too long, these so-called shorts creators have been poisoning the minds of a generation with this meaningless slop. During this villain monologue, we see eight channels flash up across the screen. Johnny Razor, Mog Swamp, Royal Pear, Joe Kane, Dan O'Kell Drawings, Can Splash, Bun Dun, and Failure. The boss ends up giving these creators an ultimatum. They need to stop making shorts within the next week, or they will be, quote-unquote, replaced. That right there, that is ominous. Since the ARG started on July 16th, that meant that they only had until July 23rd, one week later, to stop. And as it turns out, two of the creators, Mog Swamp and Can Splash, actually took the message to heart. You guys are all asking me why I stopped making shorts. I I really can't talk about it, but it has to do with basically a message I received. I don't want to say like a threat. I will. That was totally a threat. But since those two complied with the boss's orders, they are not part of the story from that point forward, at least for this particular season. This then leaves our main six creators. And let's just say by the end of that first week, they were probably wishing they'd heeded the warnings. Begun the Shorts Wars have. Over the next week, some oddities start plaguing the remaining six creators as their videos roll out. What kind of oddities are we talking about? Well, you'd be watching a failure video when all of a sudden you see Johnny Razor Gagnum styling throughout the frame. In fact, across all the channels, we start to see these sorts of crossover glitches. What's more, if you look at the actual content of these videos, a common theme starts to develop. Is cloning humans possible? I bet you can't clone me, Kobe. I bet you I can. I bet you he can. As a cell source for cloning must be from living tissue like skin, so saliva wouldn't work. TikTok has a massive problem, and it has to do with clones. clones. All of a sudden, these creators can't stop talking about clones, almost like they're worried about being replaced. But believe it or not, that wasn't even 
even the strangest thing to start happening in the videos, a bunch of the shorts started hiding this random string of 11 characters in their videos, which immediately got my theorist senses a tingling. Normally this would be where we whip out our Caesar ciphers or decoder rings, but here, there's no need. Thanks to working on YouTube longer than most of the audience watching it's been alive, I instantly recognized this as a YouTube video ID. So I slapped it into a URL and was taken to this unlisted video called clonevpn.mp4. Hmm, clone, there's that word again. Anyway, at first this doesn't seem so different from the millions of other ads for VPNs that you see across YouTube already. We all love the internet, but with all the problems of the world today, there's no better time to invest in a VPN, so choose us. Clone VPN is the VPN of all time. You get it, we get it, we've all seen a billion VPN ad reads at this point. We also get a list of the clone VPN partners, which features a lot of the people that were expressly called out by the boss. But then we get to this feature right here that truly sets clone VPN apart. And let me tell you, we're not talking about unlocking international streaming rights that aren't available in your country. And with our disappear reappear feature, you and your favorite digital influencers could suddenly be unreachable and perhaps have a slight but unnoticeable change in behavior or content. Clones disappearing and reappearing, slight but unnoticeable changes? Yeah, the narrative is clearly forming here. The boss is gonna somehow clone and replace these YouTube Shorts creators through clone VPN. Now the only question is, how? Well, I'm gonna tell you the how in a minute, but before that, I can tell you the how they could have avoided this threat entirely if only the Shorts creators had used the sponsor for today's video, Incogni. Yeah, step aside there, clone VPN. We've got a real sponsor in the house. Tell me if this one sounds familiar. The other week, I was out at the grocery store stocking up on a gallon-sized jug of Diet Coke, and I signed up for their loyalty card to get a discount. I thought that I could trust the store, and yet, lo and behold, I almost immediately started getting all these spammy emails and scam phone calls. Another time, I was searching up information about Mattel for our Barbie video that we just released, and now all the ads that I see everywhere are Amazon links to Hot Wheels and Ken dolls. This happens because in the United States, it's totally legal for companies to track, collect, and sell your personal data without you knowing anything about it. And it's not just your email and shopping habits that these corporations are getting a hold of. It is a lot of your private information as well. Stuff that you do not want to get out into the public. We're talking your full name, your home address, your phone number, your relatives, aliases, education, employment history, heck, even your social security number. There is no world where they need to know any of that stuff. The good news here is that you have the right to request that these data brokers delete your information. That way you can sleep safe and sound at night knowing that you're not gonna get a random phone call at midnight trying to sell you the latest Barbie Malibu dream mansion. The downside to everything though, might take you actual real years to get all your info scrubbed clean. Incogni though, can help you with that. While services like VPNs are defensive, trying to keep your info out of the hands of these corporations, Incogni actually goes on the offense. They're gonna be your representative and track down the brokers who are actively selling your personal information out there and then they demand that they leave you alone. Delete your stuff from the system. Your personal information is being bought and sold and you are getting nothing out of it except a nuisance. It's time to change that and Incogni is the key to help. Let me tell you, after signing up for their service to test it out for myself, I saw the difference overnight. Gone were all the obnoxious spam emails that I was getting. And as far as phone calls go, I don't get any. Spam or otherwise, which is exactly the way it should be. If you want to protect your data today, go to incogni.com slash film theory and use the code film theory to get 60% off an annual incogni plan. Again, that's incogni.com slash f-i-l-m-t-h-e-o-r-y and then use the code film theory. Or, you know, you can just skip all that hassle and just go down to the top line of the description. Thanks again to Incogni for sponsoring this video and keeping my personal information out of the boss's hands. And now, let's hop back to the shorts wars. See, when you're dealing with a malicious AI or evil VPN program, in order for it to harm you or your computer, you need to let it in, so to speak. Viruses operate on vampire rules. They have to be invited in by running a program or clicking a bad link or something. Well, that's exactly what all these shorts creators did. On July 20th, Royal Pair uploaded a short with another hidden video ID. Here, we see the shorts creators finding an email in their inbox from Clone VPN, reaching out for a sponsorship deal. They're offered a crisp $20,000 for an ad read, and wanting to secure the bag, they each click a not-so-suspicious link. Nothing can possibly go wrong from that, right? Somehow, this allows the boss to access their computers and use their online identities as a base to clone them. How can we be sure about this? Well, everyone accepts the Clone VPN deal, except for one of them, Joe Kane. Huh? Sponsorship? Clone VPN? No, I don't think so. The only thing I'm ready to promote is Genshin.
Yep, the internet's favorite short speedrunning Swede turns down the deal. And as you can tell by the text that flashes across the screen as he closes the email, the boss ain't too happy about it. But the rest of his master plan is proceeding on schedule. You see, on July 22nd, the day before the boss's ultimatum comes due, I found QR codes hidden in Johnny Razor and Dano's channels that take us to an unlisted video that shows us exactly how the clone sausage gets made. We find ourselves in some sort of scientific facility, and one by one, information about each YouTuber is uploaded into some strange machine. The computer powers up, and using all the data, a literal clone of the creators is generated in the physical world. It's here that we see that the boss is true to his word, both the good and the bad. Both Mog Swamp and Can Splash aren't cloned, because they listened to the boss and stopped making shorts, while the others are cloned. Though some turn out better than others. Johnny Razor, Failer, and Bundun's clones are made without an issue, but during the cloning process for Royal Pair, there's an error R34 that appears on the screen of the machine. And it's at this point that the people on Team Theorists that aren't familiar with the rules of the internet realize that they probably shouldn't be googling Royal Pair R34. Masterful troll there, guys. Anyway, that error causes the clone machine to create a malformed clone of Royal Pair's normal Tropius design. The final clone to be made in the machine is Dano's channel's character, Riggy. Interestingly, since the Riggy character was the one who clicked the sponsorship link on behalf of Dano the creator, he's the one who got himself cloned. However, due to his giant bunny ears and long monkey tail, the machine hilariously can't figure out what species he's meant to be, and the machine partially blows up. But not before spitting out a strange strange-looking clone of Riggy, just without the tail. As the 23rd rolls around and the boss's deadline passes, the clones are deployed to the various channels, and we see their violent takeover. In some comically over-the-top, yet still YouTube monetization-friendly violence, Johnny Razor's clone shoots his original seven times in the chest, Bundun is kidnapped under the table mid-video, while Riggy, Failer, and Royal Pair's clones are taken away to some unknown fate. But for all the creators, the results are the same. Each of the new clone creators uploads an ad for Clone VPN, all of which are basically basically carbon copies of the same thing. Huh, it's almost like they're all clones of each other. You're in danger? On average, a single person will visit 130 web pages per day. But what's scary is that an estimated 10% of all websites are malicious or out to get you. So basically, this gives us a glimpse of what happens when the boss wins. The clones are just shoveling out content now. They're recycling scripts, they're reusing ideas, they're copying one another in an endless loop of video sludge. What's even worse, though, is that a new date's being seen in the background of some of the newly uploaded shorts pointing to July 30th. This is the day where all the original creators will be killed and the clone invasion will be complete. So, is that it? Is all hope lost for these shorts creators as these half-rate clones come in and just take over the content? Thankfully, no. The OG creators are fighting back from the inside. All through the videos, they leave notes saying that they're still alive, with Johnny Razor somehow surviving being shot seven times. Now, he himself is hatching a plan behind the scenes to get into the facility and save the day, using a special flash drive that he somehow magically obtained. How? Don't ask. At least not yet. But the clock is ticking, and they don't have much time before July 30th comes to pass and many of the creators are killed for good. Namely, both Royal Pair and Riggy are in the most immediate danger, as both are currently being held in the clone VPN facility, but they're not gonna take it lying down. On July 29th, Dano uploaded a short where clone Riggy finally goes off the deep end. A QR code is hidden at the end of this one, leading us to a then-unlisted video titled Where Did Riggy Go.mp4. Here, we see both Riggy and Pear being interrogated by their clones, but Riggy is able to escape, free Pear, and book it towards an exit. Interestingly, the end card of this one actually takes us to another video, with audio of a conversation between Clone Riggy and the boss. And let's just say that the boss man is not happy with Royal Pair and Riggy's escape. And we learn that the two found the facility's control room while exiting the building. I can see the exit! It's right up ahead! Hold on, is that a control room? Judging by the sign on the door, I'd say yes. If we don't shut down the clones, they'll just get sent right back here. Realizing that they're PNG tubers and therefore two-dimensional, Riggy and Pear slip through the door, and they see that the boss's plan is way bigger than they ever realized. All of them have codes. It seems like whoever uses the code sends more energy to the cloning machine, and it looks like it's getting ready to clone every shorts YouTuber. Yep, the boss's big plan is to use his VPN sponsorship to clone every shorts tuber and replace them with just garbage content. And given how widespread VPN sponsorships are, guessing he's gonna be able to get every single YouTuber on the platform in less than a month. But thankfully, there's a way to stop his plan once and for all. If they pull all the codes together and use the energy to overload the machine, they can use that power to create a virus that will knock out clone VPN forever. What then is the code? Well, here's where things get really cool. Remember when all the clones did those sponsorship videos back when they first took over? Well, each video ends with a promo code that features two to three characters, their name, and then a number one to five. Now, I saw this and knew it had to mean something. By removing the creator name, 
names, and then ordering what's left by those numbers at the end, you get this. Now surprisingly, that isn't a YouTube video ID, even though it's the same length and format. So I assumed that it was some sort of a code or a cipher, but that also didn't work. We just didn't have all the information at the time. This is what that code was for. It was yet another masterful troll, and I gotta admit, this time, this time they definitely got me. But there's a problem. They need someone on the outside to enter the code. Thankfully, they remember that Joe Kane refused the deal and hasn't been captured. Joe, oh, what? Joe, oh, oh. Riggy? Okay, if I have to do it, we need to hide it from him. Scanning the QR code that pops up on screen sends us to another secret video where Joe puts the code into the clone VPN website, which lets Riggy and Pear create the virus. A virus that just so happens to teleport into the possession of Johnny Razor. Yep, that's where he got the drive from. A fact that the boss realizes in real time. So they got the hard drive through the portal. Sadly, yes. And there was someone on the end to receive it. That means, oh, uh, A man in the flannel. Of course, Razor. Why does it always come back? To Razor. Though we don't actually see it happen, Razor uploads the virus, which then allows each of the creators to have a 1v1 battle against their clones to regain control and end this saga once and for all. With the creators victorious, we're treated to a post credit scene where the boss and clone Riggy vow to come back. And then it's here that we get our big twist ending. They've all regained control. <sighs> Useless clones. What are we gonna do now? Well, we are going to do something far greater than our original plans. Because now, I'm angry. And the best part is, they still don't know who's in control. The flannel. Johnny Razor was the boss the entire time. No, that's not possible. But 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 no, really, that's that's literally not possible, right? If Johnny was the one who uploaded the virus and saved the day, that means that he played an integral part in his own plan failing? Doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I mean, sure, maybe you could argue that Riggy did the smart thing and went to the server room by himself, but this post-ARG Q&A stream seems to argue otherwise. Uh, before um, yeah, the website went down, uh, what was Joe Kane originally supposed to do. Originally, he was going to send me the flash drive, but then we changed it to like take down the website and have Riggy send the flash drive instead. Even if we ignore these non-canon live streams, in the logic of the show, Johnny can't be the big boss. Remember earlier when the boss said this? Razor, why does it always come back to Razor? It doesn't make sense why he'd both pretend to hate Razor and then openly admit that he's Razor in the very next scene. So no, this man can't be the real Johnny Razor. So is it a clone then? Well, Johnny's clone is... Take that, you stupid clone son of a... Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Yeah, he's not having the best time. So if the boss is neither the real or cloned version of Johnny Razor, then who is he? Third clone? PewDiePie? Me? This is where I have to wave the white flag, at least for now. I don't think there's quite enough information out there to solve that mystery just yet. And I suspect that the boss's identity will be revealed when Shorts War has its season two, which I, for one, am totally stoked for. I gotta say, this has gotta be one of the coolest ARGs that I've seen happen across YouTube. And what's more, I believe the story that these creators told has a lot more meaning than just a bunch of clones taken over. See, while watching this, I kept coming back to the question, what's the point? And, and I don't mean that in a harsh, like, why did they make this sort of way? No, I wanted to know what theme they were trying to communicate through all this. And I believe that we find that in the entire concept of this thing, clones. The story of this first season of The Shorts War is a commentary on cloned content across the internet. I'm sure you've seen these sorts of things around before. Either YouTube channels or TikToks or whatever will just rip content from other websites and re-upload them, trying to make a quick buck off of someone else's work. It's a problem that we here at Theorist have to deal with all the time. And it's something that Johnny Razor himself even talked about before the Shorts War ARG began. I have been cloned. Not in a lab, but on TikTok. This, I believe, is what sparked the whole idea of the ARG. See, the clones that we see in the series could never truly replace the creators because they aren't those creators. Riggy actually sums it up perfectly in one of his shorts. So if you were hoping to have a perfect duplicate of yourself who was in sync with you on every level, definitely not possible because our personalities are created by the experiences we gone through all our lives. Those real-world clone TikTok accounts might be able to steal and upload videos, but they're never gonna be those creators. A person's work is a culmination of their own experiences and insights, their successes and their failures all wrapped up into a person with their own thoughts and feelings. And in this story, I think that the clones realize this. Or at least some of them do, like Royal Pear's clone. During one of his shorts, he seems to have second thoughts about all the mindless creation of content that's now his life. All websites on the internet are malicious or are out to get you. Oh, do I really have to do this ad read? Yes. 
I don't know about you, but I want to do something more. I get we exist for a single purpose and all, but isn't there more to existing than just making shorts? And later, as he's interrogating the real royal pair, the clone feels bad about it. Dude, I'm sorry I have to tie you up. My boss will kill me if I don't. He's only doing it because his boss, the algorithm that needs content, is demanding it. But here's the thing. There's another path in all of this. You can take the content of a creator that you love and do your own path. You can use it as inspiration to create your own art. Even if it's similar to the people who inspired you, it'll be uniquely yours because you're the one who made it. And here's the spoiler alert, nothing is ever wholly original anymore. I mean, Mozart and Da Vinci didn't create their own works in a vacuum, they were inspired by what they enjoyed looking at and listening to. Your favorite YouTubers? Exactly the same. Here's Johnny Razor's thoughts before they started the ARG. And I don't care if you re-upload my stuff as long as you're giving me credit and not trying to be me, but people in the comments seem to have lost the plot and link me to people making similar content but still their own. I'm not the first guy to talk in front of a green screen or have bad ideas. Heck, I was inspired to do the green screen by Nakey Jakey. I want to be an inspiration. Let them be inspired. Make stuff. Just do it. Couldn't have said it better myself, Johnny. I was pretty darn inspired by all of your collective work. Onward to season two, my friends. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut.